we're gonna make a mess in my kitchen tonight. That is my goal, even though my kitchen kind of already needs tidied up. So like, no, no peeking, no peeking, no peeking. I have to do the dishes. I haven't done them yet today. But we're gonna make a little bit of a mess in the kitchen and I'm really excited because I hope in the future I can figure out a cool way to do like some cooking vlogs because after being vegan for six years, I forget what a novelty it is to people and how much yummy stuff there is that I get to eat every day that people don't know is vegan and available and that somebody with very rudimentary cooking skills like me with very low cooking skills uh, can actually create. So I'm hoping in the future I can make some fun vlogs like going through how I cook things and it wouldn't really be super fancy but maybe we could do something cute with it like cooking skill level up and maybe I can play some cooking mama on stream sometime to kind of balance it. I think that'd be fun. Maybe I'll get some inspiration from cooking mama. I actually really love those games. They're adorable. But anyway, we're gonna make a mess in my kitchen tonight starting with some fachacha bread as I call it. It is not actually fachacha bread. Uh, rosemary fochia. I cannot pronounce it to save my life. So Chips and I call it fachacha or fachacho bread um, or fachacha cha. And like we'll do a little cha cha dance when I talk about it. But it's the very first bread that Chips and I actually learned how to make ourselves. And it's super easy. It is so easy. It is from uh, Issa's wonderful Veganomicon. So in love with it. I got this from Chips's sister as a Christmas gift this year. And he opened it up one day, saw the word rosemary, and was like, I'm gonna learn how to make bread. And sure enough, he turned around and he made the bread. And he has since taught me, who started out as his sous chef, on how to make this bread too. So we're gonna be making this. But the Yeastie Boys are already inside of the bowl doing the work of growing and, and multiplying in the warm water. And the only other ingredients we need for this entire operation are right here. We need some rosemary, some really wonderful organic fresh rosemary. My camera is so hating me right now. There we go. But some organic rosemary that I am going to dice up. Chips broke our slap chopper on some ginger the other night, so I need to get a new one. But this is the best rosemary we have ever had, just for the record, the Simply Organic brand. And there's two huge reasons that it is the best. One of which is that it is simply the freshest, most delicious smelling rosemary we have ever worked with. And the second of which is that it has the cutest jars that I hoard deep in my craft section of my closet. And it chips rolls his eyes and tells me <laughs> that I need to find some way to use them. But they're just so cute. Maybe I could put like Minecraft minifigures in them or some little art project. I'm not sure, but they're adorable. I love these jars. Anyway, some rosemary, some flour, some olive oil, and some salt. And I love using this Himalayan sea salt that we actually got from uh, Amazon. It is so flavorful. And that sounds like a really weird thing to say about salt, but it's true. So I highly recommend it. And I'm gonna mix it all together. I'll show you guys before I get to the kneading part, but after that, it's gonna get messy. And then the part where we have to give it a few hours to get ready to eat arrives. By the way, kitchen hack. If you have to chop up some rosemary, the dried rosemary will fly everywhere if you're not careful. But if I cover it up with a little paper towel and then go to town, then it will stay in one place. But really, the best thing to do is get a slap chopper, but chips broke ours. All right, all the ingredients are in. I love this part. It always looks like a little bit of a science experiment, like some kid is mixing together a volcano for science class. But time to mix all of this together and then knead it on my counter and make a huge mess. There we go. And now my little bread baby is all covered in olive oil again and sitting back inside the bowl where I am about to put it to sleep by covering it with a towel and shoving it in a corner for two hours. <laughs> which is a really long time, I know. Making bread at home is definitely something that takes a lot longer than I'm used to with bread, which is normally just going into my cabinet and pulling out a loaf, but it's so fun and it tastes like nothing else. The fresh baked bread is just, it's delicious and I absolutely love it. So the other thing we're going to be working on tonight is making some beefy seitan stir fry, which sounds kind of confusing if you have never heard or seen seitan before. It's a like vegan 
beef sort of replacement in a lot of recipes and it's basically like vital wheat gluten turned into a solid mass that you chop up and you season and it's actually really delicious. I would have never touched it with a 10 foot pole until I wanted to try this recipe and now it's one of our favorite recipes. And tonight is actually the last night before Chips is done with his long days before his spring break and he's been working so hard this semester and last semester that when he comes home really late like 8 to 9 p.m on these days i try to make sure that there's like some yummy food waiting because he's been away and he only takes protein bars <laughs> all day long so I'm hoping you know when he comes home it'll be something yummy and then it also helps to fuel me for going back upstairs and recording some adventures so beefy seitan asparagus stir fry is coming up next all right phase two of dinner the beefy asparagus stir fry and it is so good oh my goodness I would have never ever ever looked at this and gone yay seitan and been excited to cook it before but I saw that picture in the cookbook and yes this is another Issa cookbook it is a different one we have all of her cookbooks except for the vegan pie in the sky which I hope to get my hands on sometime soon um so yeah it's another one of her recipes it's amazing it's it's actually a lot simpler to make than it looks. You put all of this together in a bowl to make the sauce, you chop up all of this and you put it in a pot to stir it together, and you mix the two together after a while, put it on top of a bed of rice with a pinch of any bean sprouts or cashews if you have them lying around, and you make that amazing, delicious meal. But I won't just show you guys a picture, I'll prove it. And almost done. I wish you guys could smell the mint and the ginger that is coming up off of this. But this is so good. The rice is already done. All we have to do is just wait for it to thicken a little bit more on the bottom. And then I will add in some cashews, put it on top of some rice, and we will have a nice hot dinner. And it is one more hour before I can actually wrap up the bread. And so we'll have a little bread for dessert tonight. So an hour later, we have the bread almost done rising on the counter downstairs, the rice finished, and we have a very hearty, huge pot of food with the beefy asparagus and uh, seitan stir fry, which is so, so good. I really, really love this recipe. If you've never had seitan before, I highly recommend trying it out because you really can't go wrong. It does require a few steps. The first time it was like, put the seitan in with the uh, sesame oil and then put it to the side and add later. I like freaked out because that sounded so complicated to me. But now I'm so used to making it. It's really easy if you cut all of the ingredients before you put them in. I don't put the sriracha in at all, just in case you see that and it chases you away. And it's really yummy and it's so fragrant. I wish you guys could smell the ginger and the mint that comes from this dish. And Chips really, really loves ginger. And I'm actually learning to really adore ginger. A day where I don't cook with raw ginger root kind of feels weird to me now. But I, we're gonna be doing more cooking in just a little bit because I need to now wait for the bread to finish rising and then put it into its little pan, wait for it to rise for about 20 more minutes and then we're finally gonna cook it. And then later this evening, I'm actually going to try to summon up the energy in order to make some vegan magic bars, which is a heck of a lot of food and you're probably wondering why I'm making so much food. And the answer is Tuesdays are my big cooking days because they are the day that Chips comes home super late. The sun has set, it is pitch black dark outside and he just walked in the door and was so relieved to see hot food waiting for him and I'm not gonna really see him <laughs> He's in his office, I'm in mine. Won't really see him until Thursday. And then we'll finally be able to like talk to each other again because that's how busy he is. And I try to make the, the most of that time. So Tuesdays are a huge cooking day in the evenings for me. So it's a nice hot meal when he comes home. And then we eat off of the food I make on Tuesday until the weekend when we start cooking and experimenting with new recipes together. And I think he might be getting a little tired of my obsession with beefy asparagus and seitan. So um, yeah, we may actually start looking into new recipes. And that's where you guys come in because I'm going to drag my Issa cookbooks upstairs and I'm going to start flipping through them. And then hopefully we can 
start doing some sort of fun little vlog thing. Maybe I really think it'd be cute to be like cooking skill level up and try to figure out a cute little gamer twist way to do it. Not to like copy anybody or anything like that, but just it's literally leveling up my cooking skill. That's what I'm doing. I started at zero <laughs> and I've been building it in the last couple months and I'm really proud and excited to show you guys how it's not scary and hard to cook vegan in a very humble holding my camera while trying not to drop it in the stew or the flour kind of way. So this is probably going to take a while for me to figure out how to film it so that I don't ruin my camera nor my food. Uh, but I'm excited about the challenge of it. I'm ex looking forward to sharing more vegan recipes with you guys. And I'm going to eat my dinner now and then we'll be back to work on some bread and maybe even some magic bars later this evening. Okay, now that the bread has easily doubled in size, look at that, I'm so proud of you. Good job, yeasty boys. We're going to put it down on the counter that once again is covered in flour and then put it into here and then it's gonna take another nap. We're almost done. This bread may seem like it takes a long time and it kind of does, but I promise after the first couple times of making it, it doesn't seem that bad. But we let the bread sleep for another 20 minutes so it could rise just a little bit more. It didn't really rise a lot. That might be my bad. Uh, every single one is different, especially when you're a complete novice with making bread and you just kind of have to keep going until you gain the experience. So we're grinding out delicious bread to gain the experience to actually cook this thing correctly for once. But now I have drizzled on a little bit of rosemary, some oregano, because Chips really, really loves it when it has some oregano on it. Uh, we've got some more Himalayan sea salt and some olive oil drizzled across the top. It's gonna go in the oven for exactly 20 minutes. And then finally, this phase of our vegan food making adventures will be done for the night. And finally finished. So project number two of the night, done. And as usual, this bread looks completely different than every other time we've ever made it. So I hope it tastes pretty good, it looks pretty good. Oh, that crust is gonna be fantastic. Look at that, oh, it's beautiful. But time to move it out of the way so that I can continue on to the next project, making some magic coconut cookie bars, also <laughs> by Isa. So the coconut oil and the dark brown sugar are currently simmering on the stove for another five minutes while I come over here with the freshly ground up graham cracker, a little bit of the vegan butter, and a tiny pinch of sugar, and we're going to dump it out onto the pan that is now freed of its bread, and we are going to spread it and smash it down. Okay, now that I have patted down the graham cracker crust and chips sprinkled sprinkles in my graham cracker crust. If it turns out weird, it's all his fault. He loves adding sprinkles to anything, but this is not, it's supposed to look like this. Do you see sprinkles on this? I don't see sprinkles on this, but it tickles him to sneak by me while I am trying to cook and to sprinkle sprinkles on things. At least the fachacha bread made it without sprinkles. And he, he tried a little of it and he said it was good. So hopefully it is. But anyway, <laughs> Now that this part is done, what we are going to do is pour the warm coconut sugar mixture over here as evenly as possible. I'm trying to do this. Ooh, it might still be hot rather than warm, but there we go. Trying to do this one-handed can be a little tricky, but I got it. I've made this a couple times by now. So now we've got that part of it done. And now I am going to add an absolutely terrifying amount of chocolate chips. And then we are going to sprinkle a whole bunch of shredded coconut. We actually find the unsweetened shredded coconut makes this so much better for some reason. Less sugar, which really is a good thing for this meal. But it actually is really, really good unsweetened. So we really love this unsweetened coconut. Highly recommend it. And then I need to chop up and sprinkle on the pecans on top. So I will see you guys as soon as I am done with all those bits and pieces. All right, there we go. All of the toppings are put on. I have smushed it down gently. You want to see some of the caramelized coconut milk come up through the edges. And now it is going to go into the oven for half an hour. And done. Oh my goodness. You want to know a secret? My favorite part is the toasted pecans on top. And then unfortunately there's a little bit of chocolate between the pecans and the delicious graham cracker crust on bottom. But Chips was so happy. He was just sniffing around the kitchen and he was giving me a hug and saying thank you for cooking so much food. 
unfortunately for him, um, he's not going to be able to eat this until tomorrow because now we have to stick it in the fridge to cool and chill overnight.